the next presentation is all about getting motivated and more importantly making change and making a difference to your operation. And none better to cover off that topic and uh, bring the team home other than Nathan Scott. Nathan uh, started his own consultancy business a couple of years ago and he has a whole team of people under the banner of Achieve Ag Solutions. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll find the clicker in a minute. Um, has a real passion and background for prime lamb production and particularly really focused on, I'd say, uh, understanding the potential that's out there in your system and, and, ex and exploiting that and managing for that um, through improved lamb survival, lifting growth rate and really honing in, I suppose, overall management and the things that are in your control. Um, Nathan is probably the, the go-to person in the area of electronic ID both within stud and commercial enterprises and, and also cattle enterprises. Um, provides a lot of individual um, information to clients and probably one of our recent things we've been doing together under the tutelage of Ken Solly is coaching farmers in the area of paddock allocation for lambing. So it's sort of a, a whole new thing that you've been spending a lot more on in the last two weeks uh, this year than maybe we have been in the last couple of years. So. Um, Nathan, thank you very much. Uh, getting motivated and making change. Nathan Scott. All right, thanks, Jason. Um, interesting task to be uh, to be given with this presentation to uh, to fire everyone up at the end of the day. And thankfully, we've got most people back in the room. We were forming a human wall out there to try and direct you in here. To me, this is almost the mo the most impart important part of the whole day. It's great for us to wander around and hear information, and we've had some damn good um, speakers throughout the day, but it's no good if no one does anything with it. And one of my great frustrations, and we hear it all the time, is the comment, farmers won't change. Bullshit. If farmers won't change, we would not have 300 plus people sitting in this room. I wouldn't have a job. We would be wasting our time. So for me, the thing is, we've got to... I think, as an industry, we've got to get better at how we change and how quickly we change, the way we adopt new technologies, new concepts, old concepts. Some of the things that you saw today, some of them aren't new. They're just being framed in a different way. So I start, whenever I talk to my clients, whenever I talk to uh, groups of people, I always talk about this. Whatever we do well today, we can do better tomorrow. Doesn't matter whether it's talking about me or whether it's Jason, the way that he presents and knocks things off, or however it is. Whatever we are doing well today, we can do better tomorrow. And that's how you should enter every room. Every time you go into any of these presentations, that's what we should be trying to do. And the thing for me, some of you will have seen this before, but we have um, a concept which is around control and influence. There are certain things, you look at the, the, we've got an outer circle there, which is concern. Concern is where we have things, like weather. We are concerned about it but we have very little control or influence over it. There are other things that we have significant amounts of control. And my whole aim is for you to get more within your control and within your influence. Because what tends to happen, we can go around, we can hear all sorts of great pieces of information on a day like today, and then this happens. We have things that are outside of our control that really start to influence our thinking. Things like weather. Our ability to be able to adapt to it is something that we can influence and control but the actual weather we have no control over. Prices, how much can we influence price? A few things like that. So for me, we have all these things that sit outside. Our aim is to try and drag them back to the middle. All of the ideas that you've heard throughout today, we need to try and drag them back into your control, get them into your system, get that change happening within your business. So this is what we're trying to do. There are some things that we will never get under our control. Our aim is to drag as many things as we can back into the center of this control and influence circle. So for a lot of you, you will have essentially a to-do list out of today. You'll have heard a range of ideas, things that you think worth um, including in your business, ideas to take home. This is what I came up with. I just had a quick flick through the, the program and thought, here's a good to-do list. We want to do things like improve lamb survival. We want to try and drought-proof our farm, set up a succession plan. When we write to-do lists, we write to-do lists for a really good reason. Essentially, what we want to be able to do is we want to cross things off. And I just want to spend a moment thinking about why that feels good. And basically the whole idea is every time we do this, we get a hit of dopamine. Now dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It basically acts as a hormone. It's our pleasure hormone. Really important uh, in things like addiction even. So from drugs, sex, lots of things that make us feel good, to-do lists. 
As soon as we put a line through something on a to-do list, you get a hit of dopamine. It makes us feel good about things. So it's the sole reason also why when you write your to-do list, often you do this. You add something that you've just done, like clean out the ute, and then you cross it off. And it gives you a hit of dopamine. That's why we do it. You've all done it. That's why you're laughing. So there are things that give us these little hits of dopamine, things that actually help drive motivation. Little things like Twitter. For any of you on Twitter, every time someone follows you on Twitter or retweets something, you get a little hit of dopamine. That's why when I look around the crowd, I watch people sitting on their phone. They quickly check, see if anyone's retweeted the thing that they just tweeted here. By the way, you can follow me at Achieve Ag. <laughs> I, I could do with the dopamine. Um, so that's the whole thing. We get a retweet, we get a fault like or a follow on, uh, on Facebook, and it gives us this little hit of dopamine. We get an email come through on your phone. That's why people get addicted to checking their phones. I am a perfect example of it. Get addicted to checking my phone, because every time something comes through, I get this little spark of dopamine, and away I go again. It keeps you up and about. So the problem with a list like this one, though, is if we were to sit and look at that list as it stands there right now, I can almost guarantee you, as it's written there now, you're not going to achieve much. And the whole reason is this. Procrastination. As it stands with a list in the way that that's worded there now, each of those tasks is too big. They're too all-encompassing. They're too daunting. You will not make change based on that sort of thing. Now, procrastination, there's a very good quote up there, a mystical land, tomorrow is a mystical land where 99% of human productivity, motivation and achievement is stored. That's why diets always start tomorrow. So, procrastination, the simplest explanation for procrastination is my time at uni. And basically, if I had an assignment due, the logical thing would be to plan out that amount of work. Work my way through it so that I knew... I could hit it by the due date. Reality is, that's not what was happening. It was something more like this. <laughs> and I populated that space, don't worry, I filled in that space really well. It was uh, things like guitar, footy, beer, even staring out the window. Really good use of my time. That's what procrastination is. Procrastination is why YouTube is such a massive hit for us. So, I found that because I was procrastinating while I was making this talk. <laughs> Procrastination is something that it is, it's amongst everyone. And it's not a battle, it's a war. We are constantly waging this war against procrastination. So we've got to find our little tricks, our ways to work against it, because everyone is a procrastinator. It varies. Some of us are extremely good at it and skilled. Others, not quite so. So, what we need to do is, if we took that same list and broke it down further, so all I've done is the first two all of a sudden, now we have a list that looks like that. We've broken it down into tasks that we can actually achieve, smaller tasks. Breaking down, instead of just saying lamb survival, let's improve lamb survival, we're looking at things like U condition score, calculate the number of ME. The problem, though, is our list just grew enormously. You do that for every one of those things that I had on the original to-do list, and all of a sudden, we have this massive group of, uh, of tasks in front of us. And that brings us to what is called the paradox of choice. And the paradox of choice is a piece of work that was done uh, a, a fair while ago. And the best description, the, the trial work that was done is a great description of what happens with our to-do lists. They set up a trial where they had two different stalls selling jam. At one, they offered 24 different flavours of jam. At the other one, they offered six. 60% of people walking past stopped to look at that stall that had 24 different flavours of jam in front of it. Only 40% stopped to look where we had six. So you would think, great win, we've got more people coming to look at jam. If you're wondering what the hell is this bloke talking about jam for, there is something coming, I promise. 3% of people bought jam where there was 24 different flavours on offer. 30% of people bought jam where there was six. So if we put that into terms of people walking past, 100 people walking past, two people bought it from where we had 24 choices versus 12 buying it where we only had six. Basically, what we end up with is decision fatigue. If we have a list like this, 
you end up with decision fatigue. It becomes so hard to make a decision on which one you should be doing, you don't make any at all. And we don't achieve anything. All of a sudden, our to-do list, which was designed to make us more efficient, has just made us less efficient. So, what can we do? The immediate thing that people start to look at is, how can I maybe prioritise things? We'll put an A against things that are most important. B's against those are the next step down, and then C's obviously follow. The problem with that is, your C's don't become important to you until they become an A. Like, I've got up there, clean out the dam while it's empty. All of a sudden, the forecast says we've got three inches of rain coming and you're scrambling trying to get an excavator because it's gone from a C to an A. Or you don't bother servicing your car and all of a sudden, because it was a C, all of a sudden, as soon as it breaks down at three o'clock in the morning, it's an A priority for you. So there's a couple of different things that we can do. My preference is you start using your calendar more. This is one month with exactly the same list. If I go back to that list, that list of tasks there is in that calendar. All we've done is we've put time frames around it. We've actually tied things to a, an end point. If you are a, a procrastinator, putting an end date on makes things happen. It might happen at the last minute, but because you had a date where it was supposed to happen, it makes things happen. So all I've done is lay them out in, that, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a calendar. You still get the do dopamine hit. Don't worry about that. We still give you that opportunity to cross things off. Every time you cross another thing out of your calendar, there's that little dopamine hit. Now, the reason we want those dopamine hits, you achieve one little task, you cross it off, you get a dopamine hit. It helps drive your motivation. It, it helps drive you to then take the next step and cross another one off. Keep working through your, through your um, to-do list. So that's all well and good. We can build a calendar. I want you to think about using a calendar. Whether it's a wall planner, I don't care. One thing is it needs to be accessible. You need to be looking at it regularly. I don't care if that's the back of your toilet door. Somewhere where you're going to sit fairly often. If that works for you, go for it. The thing about getting stuff done, the biggest problem in getting stuff done is starting to do it. As soon as you start to do it, you get these little dopamine hits all the way through. You start to feel good about things. You start to make more and more change. The best thing we can do to get things to happen is actually begin. So I want to push this a little bit further and look at how we can actually change. What are we going to change? We see this all the time. Albert Einstein quoted as saying, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. No one actually goes out and intends to do that. It's a fallback position. We stick with what we know. We stick with what we've done and what's worked in the past, but we've got to break that. We need to change our mindset and change the way that we're thinking about things. And basically, this is, this is a, a bit of research that I found um, just the other day where they found, and the findings of it were, success is governed more by optimism and the ability to see stress as a challenge rather than a threat. It's basically about mindset, not about IQ. It doesn't matter who the smartest person in the room is here. It's the person with the mindset that allows them to actually achieve things. We've heard speakers throughout today talk about that, about having it. We heard this morning about having it. Essentially, that's exactly what we're talking about. Having it, having the ability to apply yourself, having the ability to not look at stress as a threat, but having a look at, at it as a challenge and something that you've got to work with and around. So for me, the challenge is don't be average. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone in this room necessarily, because we do have a biased audience. I can tell you because we've been standing at the stool around there getting feedback on what people are doing with, um, with their scanning of views, and this is a biased population. But my whole point for you is don't aspire to be average. Everyone in this room is here because they want to be better. And for me, I want you to be the best. Now, there can only be, if we were trying to pick the best in the room, there will only be one. But I want you to aim and aspire to be the best. The minute you aspire to be average, unfortunately, we're going to fall short. And this is a simple way of putting it. A man drowned crossing a stream with an average depth of six inches. Averages are bloody deceiving. And I don't want you to aspire to be average. I want you to aspire to be the best. The other thing that I want to do in terms of mindset, we talk about mindsets. I hear this all the time. They should be doing this. They should do that. They won't understand. I don't, care. I don't know who they are, but they seem to me like they must be a pack of bastards. I don't know who they are, but we hear it all the time. They. This isn't their industry. This is our industry. 
If we want to make changes, if we want to get better, it's up to us. When I say us, everyone in the room here, all of you, whether you're a producer, whether you're an industry person, whether you're Terry writing about it, everyone, this is our industry. So if we want to make it better, it's our opportunity to make it better. When we talk about technology, we talk about new concepts. This is my chance to poke a little bit of fun at the sheep industry. But we started out with a handpiece that looked like that. And now we've got blue ones, red ones and yellow ones. And that really frustrates me. If I had to bring a 14 year old kid and sit them down out the front here and I asked all 300 of you, explain to them what is exciting about the sheep industry. Just think about that for a minute. What would you tell them? We need to be able to answer this question. If we're going to keep bringing more and more young people in, we're going to start, keep, continue to drive our industry forwards, we need to be identifying those things that are exciting. The thing that's exciting is we've got huge opportunities. And I'll talk a bit about them as we go through now. This is just a very quick video. Stolen from the cropping industry. That is what they call weed seeker technology. It seeks or senses green matter and it sprays it. All they did was lay it out in a pattern that would play beat it by Michael Jackson. Now if we're looking at what we've got in the sheep industry to compare with that, how do we compete? We have got things coming and we've got damn exciting things coming, but that's what we're up against. That sort of technology, we used to think auto steer, they've got auto steer, we haven't got auto steer. Now they've got more. So what have we got? What can we look at? What can we play with? Where are we going with all of this? It's not playing necessarily either. It's achieving. We need to be achieving. This is just out of one of our, some of the work that we've been doing. That's 820 lambs. That's estimated growth rates from birth through to, uh, through to weaning on one of my client's properties. 820 lambs. The average for those lambs was 385 grams a day. Have a look at how many of them are above 400 grams a day from birth through to weaning. We've got an industry that talks about 300 grams a day. Bugger that. Look at how many of them are above 500 grams a day. Now that's exciting. For me, we are nowhere near what is physiologically and biologically possible within our enterprises. And yes, we can chase it with genetics and we can chase it with other science advances, but a lot of it sits with you in the room. Management, doing things at the right time. If you have a look at that graph up there, there's three dots right at the very top well over 500 grams a day. Two of those are twins. Not born as twins, raised as twins. That shows us what's possible within our, within our um, land production systems. The other thing that's really exciting for me is that 385 grams a day that was achieved was done with maternal sires. So when we start looking at the genetics, we've still got a whole other layer of growth rate genetics that we can add into the mix. That's not as good as it gets. Those pastures certainly aren't as good as they get. That was driven by management more than anything else. They're just out of first cross use. So they're nothing spectacular. The genetics aren't anything spectacular. Most of it came out of management. This is just a very quick video to show you what we can do with an auto drafter. All we've done is we've set it up. We've told it based on electronic ID, which of these animals has a red rattle on its back. Which ones have a blue rattle on its back? We've told the auto draft to draft them for us. That could be any data you can possibly think of. It might be pregnancy status. It might be growth rate. It could be fleece weight, micron, you name it. We know something about an individual animal. We can use technology like this to be able to actually influence the way we use that within our business. And the last piece of the puzzle in terms of that individual animal thing that I just want to touch on quickly is where we are heading. Now I honestly believe we're going to see more change in the next 10 years than we've seen in the last 50. 
This is an image out of um, an X-ray unit that they're starting, we're starting to see integrated into processing plants. This allows us, so you heard this morning, you heard Mark Ferguson talk about things that we are actually being rewarded for. That is going to change. This X-ray unit, it's used by processors. It's used by processors because it allows efficiency in their chain. But what we were able to do and what the sheep CRC and MLA and others are working on is the ability for us to predict lean meat yield. There are other things also that we can use like hyperspectral cameras which allow us to look at meat eating quality. If we just chase lean meat yield on its own, unfortunately we end up with pork and we don't want to do that. But if we put the two together, all of a sudden we can change the way our whole industry operates. You start being pay paid on a value-based system. You start getting paid for the quality of the product that you, pr that you provide. At the moment, our market signals are crap. You produce a lamb that's anywhere between 18 and 32 kilos, make it as fat as you want, and you'll get rewarded for it. That's not good for anyone. That's not good for the processor, because the first thing they do is hack most of that fat off, drop it in a bucket that's now worth 22 cents a kilo. They paid $6 a kilo for it. You send it in front of a consumer, and that is not what they want. So I was rapt earlier to hear the comment about consumers. That's exactly who we should be thinking about. I talk to people and I say, who do you produce your lambs for? And they will tell me, JBS, ALC, Cedar Meats, whoever else it might happen to be. That is not who you're producing lamb for. You produce lamb for a consumer. The best thing we can do is bring the consumer, and whether you like it or not, whether you're interested in it or not, what is going to happen is the consumer is coming much closer to us in all facets of what we do. So we get this new system using X-ray. We can now predict lean meat yield. We can also adapt um, things like fat, or we can measure fat co cover and meat eating quality traits. We get a value-based payment system. The other thing it does is it builds significant efficiency into the processing plants. And this is just a very short example of what is possible when we have what is essentially a roadmap. The X-ray produces a roadmap, the roadmap can then drive robots, and this is what they're capable of. There's a hindquarter completely boned out by a robot being driven by an X-ray, essentially a roadmap, telling it exactly how to do it. That is exciting technology that's coming. So we, we start to see that we've got things that are coming, things that should be exciting us. We've also got things that we've known about for a long time. The one that we, some of you would have sat in on, drones. This is some footage. We've got a small drone that we bought to see what drones are all about and fly. I think drones are going to change entirely the way we do things. I have no idea how yet. I'm not sure that anyone necessarily knows exactly where we're going until we get there with drones. But what we will be capable of, this is just me filming my lifetime U group, one of my lifetime U groups. So there's nothing that exciting except to show you that it's possible. We have all of these different technologies coming together all at once that are going to influence the way we run our businesses. So just coming back to this question around they. Who are they? Why do we talk about they? I don't want you to sit there and be someone who talks about they or them. I don't want you to be saying they should do this, they should do that. Last night, anyone who went to the dinner, we heard from Dr Charles Milne. Every time I hear him speak about foot and mouth disease, it scares the shit out of me. And part of that is because I've got an interest in agriculture, something happens overnight, we've got a major problem. Our whole role in all of this is not to talk about how they need to do something, because I still don't know who they are. As far as I'm concerned, they can get stuffed. This is about you and what you're capable of. We are in a damn exciting place right at the moment. If you're not excited about the Australian sheep industry right now, then you are never going to be. This is all about us and our future our opportunities. We've got technology all coming together at once. We've got more producer engagement than I think we've ever seen before, which is why we get 300 people at this and however many we're going to end up at LAMEX 
Um, we're getting people to come to these things. People are interested. People are wanting to change. This talk about farmers don't change, as I said earlier, it's rubbish. You will change. What we've got to try and do is equip you with a tool so you can do it as quickly and efficiently as you can and confidently without adding more risk to your business. I, um, I asked my kids the other day, I said to them, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the eldest one said to me, this is completely unprompted. I want to be a farmer. I said, well, that's good. We don't have a farm, by the way. So this is coming just out of what she's been exposed to. I thought, that's good. We've got another generation coming. My youngest said, I want to be a farmer. I thought, well, that's good. We've got another generation. I've got an expensive uh, time coming up. How are we going to do with that? Thankfully, the middle one said, I want to be the tooth fairy. <laughs> so we can't win them all. The message for me is you come to an event like this, if you don't go home with a clear plan of what you're going to implement, what it is that you're going to change within your business, then you've wasted your time being here. It's been a good social event, chance to catch up with people, people have a couple of quiet beers last night at the dinner, but unless you go home and make changes, then all you've done is just steal a day out of your working time. We hear people talk about doing the $10 an hour jobs, or the $20 an hour jobs, or the $100 an hour jobs, or the $1,000 an hour jobs. Today being here is a $1,000 an hour job. You're here to gather information to take home and make big changes within your enterprise, to change your focus. May not be massively. As I said earlier, at the very start, what we do well today, we can do better tomorrow. It may only be small tweaks, but there are big opportunities there for you to be able to implement those. So go home with a plan, not a to-do list. You'll get your little hit of dopamine as you cross things off, but the idea is to actually make things time-bound. Set a plan so that you will actually make change within your business. Thanks very much.